All right, here we are, New York Comic Con 2024, um, with our good friend Sarah Meyer. How are you doing? I am great. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. Good. Uh, I can't complain. First day of the convention. Yeah. Uh, how's it going for you so far? Oh, it's been fantastic, honestly. Um, you know, I've I've had like a pretty steady flow of traffic. I feel like like every first day of the show, you never know how it's it's going to end up for evening and afternoon because people are often still working possibly. But I've had a lot of great interactions so far, and you know, mm -hmm. made some sales and been talking to people, so it's been great. So last year, um, you had monsters come out, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, it's it's gotten a lot of accolades. Um, a lot of people really enjoy the book. I, I thought it was great. Thank you. Um, is there still a is there still do you feel like there's still a big fervor around the book? A lot of people still getting interested in it. Yeah, honestly, I would say, if anything, uh, I as as humbly as I can describe it, like I've been really really pleased and just so surprised and you know humbled really by how how much the book seems to have legs. You know yes. what I mean? Where it, it might not have been like the, the number one bestseller or something crazy big like that out of the, the gates, but it was definitely something that I think word of mouth and definitely yeah. people in the education field and uh, like librarians and teachers have really stepped up for Monstrous. And so I've been hearing a lot from people, and more and more people are reading it now due to word of mouth. So I really appreciate that. It's a, I mean, you said before, it's a very personal story for you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure, I, I'm kind of curious, some of the things that you wrote in there, is, was it difficult to put those words on page? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, like, just being very candid, there were some things that I would be writing and illustrating that I would know objectively were sad moments mm -hmm. that I wouldn't be overcome with when I was actually creating the art. But then there were other moments that were, like, so difficult that I would literally... I literally was actually crying when I would be like, working on the book. So you're quite literally seeing in the pages, in some instances, um, art that was drawn through tears. As dramatic as that sounds. Yeah, know? no, I, I but, believe it. Yeah. And it's a. Uh, do you feel that was therapeutic? I think so, yeah. And, and you know, like, remember, uh, gosh, there's so many. So many MCU movies now. I've almost forget. It was the beginning of. I want to say it was uh, not Infinity War, but it was the the first setup. Not the not the uh, it, no. It was Infinity War. Right, not Endgame. Infinity the beginning War. when when Tony Stark is talking about his uh, his little remember his experiment on stage and he goes yeah. barf. <laughs> yes. Augmented reality and he's he's replaying parts from his his yeah. issues with his father when yeah. he's younger. In some ways, I feel like I related to that because it, it is selfish of me. In many ways, it is a self, selfish uh, therapeutic experience to to write the book, and I recognize what a privilege that is. Um, but yeah, at the same time, I, I can't deny that it definitely... I hope that it would help other people who, regardless of their background, um, would feel some catharsis as well through feeling like they're not alone in their yeah. times that they felt like right. an outsider. But yeah, selfishly for me, yes, it did feel very cathartic and very and that's, I mean, I think that's one of the beautiful things about the book. And, and Don, I know you haven't read it and you're like, <laughs> you're lost. But, yeah. but as, as, like, I mean, I'm, I know Don can relate to this. And I, as somebody who, for whatever reason, we talked about this last time too. It's like somebody who was an outsider, just to see somebody else can relate to that, whether whether it's through something very traumatic or even if it's just um, being picked on in school for being overweight. You know, knowing that there are other people who share your feelings, it's it's very uh, cathartic. Right. You know, and it's it's. I think stories like this are important to tell. You know. Thank you. Yeah. No, they really are because when you talk about you know my youth, I'm an X-Men guy, obviously, and that's because you know because I was overweight and other factors. You know, it's like oh, these other marginalized people are heroes, so I'm going to gravitate toward mm -hmm. that. And so I've not read Monstrous, but obviously, just hearing you speak and talk about how librarians are getting behind it, they wouldn't do that if it wasn't making some sort of difference. Right. They wouldn't do that if it wasn't helping young people deal with their emotions because I think. In our American society, particularly somebody like me who was born in 1980, you know, emotions mm -hmm. and things like that were not like, hey, show them, right? Oh, no, yeah. put them in, yes. put them down. Um, 
So it, I'm sure it's great for some bewildered teenager to come across your book and obviously put a lot of passion into it because it's just you're crying as you're drawing this. Um, you know, obviously I can tell it's it's going to make a big difference to somebody, right? And I mean, even if it's just one person, but obviously it's going to be more than one person. But that's just how I would view a success and you taking your pain and helping relieve other people's pain and I think we as humans that's just something we should focus on is, is, is taking away other people's pain if we absolutely can oh, so thank you I appreciate that yeah I mean yeah. and um, so yeah I mean I may not have read it but I totally understand the gist of it and appreciate it because that's why I originally got into comics because it's just like maybe I'm a mutant you know or, or at least there's these people here that they're weird but they're loved, yeah. and maybe I could be that group too, yeah. so it's very important. I definitely felt like I, I related as a kid, and, and even still now, to more so to mutant ninja mm -hmm. turtles, you know, yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right. than, than people. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, and, and I feel like comics, the act of creating comics through images and words, as well as reading them, is like mm -hmm. such an empathic um, activity in general, because you're not just reading the words somebody's written, you're also kind of seeing the drawings and thus you're seeing the way that that person views the world mm -hmm. that reality well you brought them up speaking of turtles um you're still working on the interiors and everything in the book yes uh ever since may 2023 uh when i was offered that position um and that was just such a dream come true i'm still like elated and i i've been 13 issues later drawing wow like or 13 stories i should yeah. say later so I'm finishing up issue number 22. I'm a uh, tag teaming sort of where like I'll take I'll take like two or three issues, and then Dan Shoning will take over yes. drawing for two or three issues. So we each get like our own little mini arcs, um, and we're alternating, and it's still been a blast. And yeah, I, I, I've always been curious um, when you get to do interior, mm -hmm. and you're going to be you're obviously on a time schedule, right? Yes. Like. Do you, can I ask like, how much time do you know from like from the start of the, the of the issue to the end? Like how much time do you get to like come up with the the art and work on it and all sure. that kind of thing? I would say more or less it tends to be at least thirty days on average. So um, I do the layouts, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I get the layouts done usually in about a week or a little under. Okay. Um, and then they're reviewed, and then uh, it's pretty much. Maybe a few notes. Oftentimes, luckily not. Uh, and then just they'll tell me uh, to go ahead and ink. And I, I ink from my layouts, but I have to do my own rough and tight pencils in, yeah, in the middle. Yeah. And jokingly, I always say, like, I'll look at the layouts, and it's like maybe a week and a half later after I drew them first, and I'm like, oh, man. Some idiot just drew Michelangelo, and here's a scribble <laughs> with like, a smiley face. I'm like, I gotta ink this? I'm like, I know it was me who did it. It's right. just, it was past me, and past I'm really me. mad. <laughs> like, great. But um, so then you know, like, uh, that that leaves me like usually more than twenty days to do twenty pages. So page a day, and I'm trying to get to the point where I schedule it so that I can very relaxed to take a weekend occasionally. But oftentimes right. I want. I'm so excited about it anyway. If my wrist is feeling good, if I'm feeling good. I'm gonna want to, you know, finish it early because I'm just I can't wait to like finish the story. It's exciting. No, oh, that's that's good. I mean, that's a great positive attitude. <laughs> and I asked kind of for a, an interesting, selfish reason, not for myself. My uh, girlfriend's one son uh, is an artist, mm -hmm. and I've talked to him like, oh, you should like look into maybe comics at some point. Sure. But he is the kind of artist. That if he's not inspired to work, he won't work. Oh yeah, you know yeah. that can be difficult. Now, I guess. Oh, sorry, I don't want to cut off your question. No, no, I no, no. I, I mean, I mean in terms of so, so that actually is uh, that is the question. Yeah. How do you like? I'm sure there are days that you wake up and you're like, I just <laughs> don't want to draw today. Like, how do you get past that? And, and to be fair, yeah. There, I mean, there are times when when. Uh, even if it is a turtle story, there are times when I think I have a lot of uh, foliage and um, brickwork to draw today, <laughs> and I would prefer that I not draw as much of that. But right. you know, uh, I try to, and it's not always easy, but I try to think of it as well. 
if I can do this, I'll just be that much one day better at drawing those bushes and those bricks because I do struggle yeah. with backgrounds. That's always been something I've struggled with personally. Um, yeah. And um, sometimes I will skip around. So, you know, as long as it's all right with my editors, I'll say, hey, is it all right if I submit inks for like this portion of the issue instead of this one? Because that first one is, that first page is going to be a doozy for me to ink. I just want to do okay. it little by little and break yeah. it down into chunks. And then, um, so sometimes I will be able to do stuff like that. Like, for example, if I'm really feeling like exhausted and I got to get a page done for my personal uh, quota, because mm -hmm. I have like a personal quota that I set for myself. My editors are always like editor has been very like relaxed. Oftentimes I'll be like, "Hi Tia, um, I I will get this to you by the end of the day." Blah, blah, blah. I might be a little bit after six p.m. Eastern time, you know. And then mm -hmm. um, she, or, I'm sorry, they are often very like very very patient, and they'll say something like, um, "Don't worry, we're ahead of schedule. You might even you know get a few extra days if you need to. Just let me know." I'm like, "Wow." But, like, it's still early, you know what I mean? So right. I appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, I'll, and I'll think to myself, I'll just do an easier page that day. So an okay. easier page that maybe has more, like, just from the shoulders up, like a character. Yeah. And it's not as much background or something like that, or one that I'm really looking forward to drawing. I'll maybe skip around if I'm really feeling like I've got a bit of a, a rut, you know? Right, right. And, and I mean... For those who maybe don't know, it's it's TMNT Saturday Morning Stories, so it's based on the the cartoon right. from the eighties or nineties. Uh, eighties. It ran from nineteen eighty seven to nineteen ninety six. Oh yeah. And wow. sometimes you'll hear it referred to as the Fred Wolf uh, cartoon or Wolf Swenson Murakami production. Right, but I mean, so that you made me think when you were when you were saying this is that. You're kind of like, for lack of a better term, you're kind of locked into a style, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it's stylistic; it needs to reflect the cartoon. So, like sometimes when you see, get an indie comic and there's no background, it's just a color. Oh, right. <laughs> like you can't get away with that in this. I mean, it, to a degree, the, it does have to uh, look exactly like the, you know, look very close to the mm -hmm. style, but. And, and it's true, it, the 87 cartoon did not really have the anime, like the Sailor Moon background, where it's mm -hmm. like, what? And like, it's yeah. just a burst. Right. But for the comics <laughs> medium, you know, mm -hmm. we, we do sometimes have panels where there's no background. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. colored, because and some of that is just for, I, I would say, storytelling practicality, because occasionally there's a character yeah. where it is like literally a close-up of the reaction, and it's not really going to, you know, the speech balloon with them going, whoa, what? It's going to, like, cover up any any quick detail that I would draw anyway. So, yeah. um, but, you know, so there are some differences, small departures from style that, that are for the comics medium. Like, I would say there are some camera angles that I will pick that I think would be dynamic and interesting for the page mm -hmm. that probably were not necessarily used in the... You know, physical production mm -hmm. of that animation. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, like I use I use Dutch angles a lot, you know, um, and definitely they weren't like they weren't ex they weren't doing like Alfred Hitchcock like camera angles and, like, right. and stuff. But no, that's true. I try to play it up a little bit because I recognize we're doing a still medium, so I try to make it like as dynamic as possible. Just for the comic reading purposes. Okay, wait. Was it Alfred Hitchcock or was it the 66 Batman that made you think <laughs> Dutch, <laughs> well, Dutch angles? I mean, just thinking in terms of, like, creepy lighting and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else that... Um, is there anything that you haven't worked on that you would love to work on? For uh, any... I mean, any... Yeah, any job, right? Is that what we're talking about? Well, yeah, I mean, any comic, any art, like, that maybe you haven't done yet that you'd love to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I recently got to do my first official Disney uh, illustration, and it was the retail incentive, or retail exclusive cover for Darkwing Duck Justice Day. Oh, nice. And I'm a huge Darkwing Duck fan, yeah. too. Disney Afternoon. Like, yeah. A, yeah, all day. Um, and I would love to do more Disney art in general, but especially Disney ducks. 
Um, with apologies to, to Don Rosa, we know that your Uncle Scrooge comic is not Disney Ducks, Don. Or, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, and, you know, more, um, oh, definitely uh, Mickey Mouse. I would love to do something like that. Yeah. I, I kind of have done something without permission that's Mickey Mouse, but we don't have to, uh, that's Michael Theodore Mouse. We don't have to talk about that as Mickey. It's fine. So, so, so two things. Um, for those who, I, like Sarah and I are friends on Facebook, so <laughs> I'm very sorry, Dave. <laughs> you are always posting pictures of you or your your Mickey that you bring everywhere yeah. with you. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I know that you love Disney and and Mickey. I mean, how many times a year do you go to like Disney World or, or Disneyland? Since so the first time I ever went to Disney World was 2022. No. 2023. Oh, oh wow. It was, okay. it was actually for my birthday in 2023. And we talked about it, I think. Yes. And that was actually where I got the email offered to draw up turtles. Nice. That's right. That's right. Yes. Disney, right? yes. And, oh, and the weird thing was when we were in the glass pavilion area, yes. the riverfront, when I was talking to you in, I think it was the last a interview, boat went by with Mickey the Disney on. cruise, like, yes, so, uh, and I thought it was a building moving because it's right. like, oh. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I've been. April of April and May into May 2023, then January of this year, then I took a solo trip uh, just a few weeks ago, and yes. then um, I went to <laughs> Disneyland. So Disney World three times, Disneyland once was the the first time I went um, last year for WonderCon in Anaheim. Oh, okay. And yes. that was, uh, and then I I have been to Tokyo Disney Sea. In 2018, before the pandemic, I, that was like a vacation to Japan that my friend and I took. So, uh, so I guess I've been a total of um, five times to a Disney park. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, then it's I just, been like fairly recently. I was about to say I became friends with you at the right time, apparently on <laughs> Facebook. Um, all right. So let's. Let, okay. So Michael T. <laughs> Is it Michael T. Mouse or Michael? It, Michael T. And the T stands for Theodore. That Theodore. is actually canonical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people don't. Wait. Okay. So you're taking liberties. Yes. Uh, with, with this group. For the people who don't know, tell them what it's about. I feel like I seem like such a depraved person. <laughs> this is unreal. So, so I decided um, in, it was like January, late Late uh, 2022 into January 2023, I did have kind of a a personal kind of moment of like abject terror because suddenly things started to happen for me. Mm, yeah, and then yeah. I became so terrified of losing those things because that was like when I was newly minted into turtles and I knew that Monstrous was about to come out that following year. So mm -hmm. the end of 2022, I started to like freak out, I guess, like internally and think about these things, and for. I saw at the, that time in November 2022 the documentary Mickey the Story of a Mouse on Disney Plus that had come out. Right. And it talked about the history of the character and obviously we've all we all know Mickey Mouse, but right. there's so many different iterations, styles of him, you know, that in which he's been portrayed, mediums obviously. And a lot of people don't really think too carefully, I would say, about the ways in which he has been underutilized as an actual character, as opposed to a symbol, you know? Um, and I, I got to thinking about that, and I was just, like, thinking, you know, technically his, his whole career is the story of wildly successful and then it losing potential, like, mm -hmm. just kind of stagnating. And that tapped into something that I was feeling at the time, so I kind of decided, you know what, I, I feel like a strong connection with this, what if what if he was a real person how would he feel looking at his current status as a corporate mascot oh, wow. and not ever having had his own full-length film and with you know donald overtaking popularity and i basically wrote this story about a real like michael theodore mouse as not like the character but as an actor who's retired right. from acting who's taken over as the CEO, but kind of because he felt he had to, not because he wanted to. And then he's he's dealing with aging. He's basically dealing with sort of his his current struggles with like 
being like a former childhood star. In a yeah, way. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the ways that his relationships throughout his life as he's aging and losing sort of his his like Hollywood looks or popularity. Yeah. Um, the ways in which he just has friction with the people in his life and his own self-image, the way that he's fighting with that. So I have this whole thing planned out. It's going to be like 38 chapters. <laughs> I'm really serious about it, and it's like 20. It's on chapter 22 now because I, I update it only when I can. And I lose money probably by doing the comic because it's yeah. spare time stuff. Yeah. But I, I want to really see it through. Are you afraid of the cease and desist letter from Disney? Uh, to a degree, I, and I recognize that that could always come. I also, mm -hmm. this is such a gambit, but like part of me thinks that I feel like whoever's whoever's tasked with reviewing these copyright violations naively and probably stupidly as it might sound, I'm kind of really hoping that they're going to actually think it's way more like engaging than violating. Right, right. You know? And I have a disclaimer yeah. that says I don't make any money on it, and yeah, I really yeah. don't, and um, it's not it's not like, uh, I didn't go like January 1st, 2023, I'm like, time to draw Steamboat Road doing something obscene, right. I can't wait. Like, like, it's very much like I'm trying, I am... I, I hope that they would be able to see that it comes from a place of respect and love right. for the, the company and the character. I mean, that, that Winnie the Pooh horror movie came out, so oh, I mean, yeah. why not, you know? I mean, man, I was, I'm like, I'm mad about that in a way. I know a lot of people that are, actually. <laughs> I'm just not going to see it, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I, uh, I'm hoping whoever, whatever lawyer sees it, right. will just be like, you know, I was supposed to sue this person, but I can't uh, stop reading. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe you could hire me. Yeah. So like, but I don't know. It's wishful thinking. Yes. I mean, here's the thing. I, I feel, I'm, I've never been on that side of the of the argument. I've never been on either side of the argument. But I feel like Disney is so big that they're not worried about about uh, Theodore, yeah, as we'll call him. <laughs> the most notes that a chapter's gotten was like eighty something, and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> so I'm not. I don't think they're even going to see it. Right, right. I um, think it's going to be a blip. <laughs> right, unless you know you become a big artist on Darkwing Duck. Well, then I'll just call up Fantagraphics because they do some really <laughs> nice stuff, right? Please, <laughs> I'll move to the Riviera, and it'll be fine. I'll just call it Topolino, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. He gets to do dramatic stuff in Italy and Belgium, yeah, yeah. you know? He's a detective and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's funny too because apparently, I didn't know this, and you said you went to, to Disney Japan. Mm -hmm. um, Mickey has a pet, or not a pet, he has a teddy bear? Yes, Duffy. Duffy, and apparently in Japan, Duffy is really big. Really popular. But yet, most people in the United States are like, who's Duffy? Who's Duffy? Yeah. yeah. And it is canon canonical. Like, there is an, mm -hmm. a cartoon where he gets this teddy bear, but, like, they never did anything with it past that. But for some yeah. reason in Japan, oh, there. they love Duffy. Because it, it kind of, uh, I think it's a reflection of their White Day and Valentine's Day type culture, where it's, it's also... When you go to the Disney parks in uh, Japan, in Tokyo, like, I noticed that I saw a lot more couples where it'd be, like, a grown man um, and woman who are, like, maybe in their 20s, mm -hmm. and they're, they're both, like, dressed up all, like, like real, like, ritzy, you know? But, like, with super cutesy stuff. Yeah. And they would each have, like, a stuffed animal or something. And so people would get dressed up. Um, and they they seem to have it's like people are don't really bat an eye if you're like walking around Tokyo Disneyland as an adult with like your own stuffed animal. Yeah. Um, so they like also that teddy bear thing for uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or et cetera. Yeah. But they also eat KFC like on holidays. So for I Christmas. Don't... Yes, for Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wanna do that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> KFC is wonderful. Yeah, tell the wife she doesn't have to cook. Well, honestly, to KFC. Like Thanksgiving, I, I, I've always thought that anybody who says that they prefer turkey over fried nope. chicken is lying. Yeah, no, <laughs> I have, fried chicken is just better. I have been trying to convince my family for five years now. No more turkey on Thanksgiving. It's dry. Yeah, it's dry. It makes you fall asleep. Let's get some right, chicken. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what I always say. If your turkey's dry, you're overcooking it. And I understand. You can't deep fry a turkey. 
Yes, but even a deep fried turkey, even the juiciest turkey, right. is still akin to the driest chicken. Ah, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So what's next? What's next for you? Anything coming out that we should look uh, more, for? More turtles, for sure. Mm -hmm. Turtles uh, Saturday Morning Adventures. Um, I've got... I have pitches for young adult graphic novels that I'm shopping around, so... Uh, and no, they're not. They're not cheer up, Michael, but that could be. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And you know, I'm always just looking for more opportunities with either IP work or, or opportunities to pitch my original ideas. So. And where's the if, if people want to follow the adventures of Michael T. Mouse? Oh, where's no. the best place for them to? This is your Instagram, right? Yeah, I, I do upload that to my Instagram when it happened. It, it used to be every two weeks, but now I'm like, I've just been so busy with turtles. Right, and, right. Um, so uh, at S Meyer, M Y E R Comics, uh, you know, on Instagram is the best place. And uh, usually most of the content there is turtles or monstrous related. Yes. Yeah, but occasionally it'll be Michael T. Mouse. <laughs> When you get the cease and desist letter, you have to post it on on Instagram. I'll, I'll put them on blast. I'll use social media like that. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll ask you. I mean, it's 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 been a year. It might your answer might have changed. Of course, the answer the question that we always end on is how do you measure success? <laughs> it's always hard too because now this is my third interview with you, right? Yes. It's always hard. What did, what did I say the first? Okay, I know last year I said I'm I'm here with you guys in this beautiful room, and uh, we're seeing the cruise ships go by more in New York City. To me, that that is success. I mean, and I still feel that way every time I go to New York Comic Con. It's so mm -hmm. exciting because New York Comic Con isn't the sort of convention that I would have been able to afford to go to, or would have yeah. had any quote-unquote business going to in terms of like having an exhibitor badge or having a pro badge which was 2022 yeah um so still like to be able to come to a space like this and talk with you guys is really you know that is i feel like this is a a marker success for me but also i i will say i think over the past few years like on a personal note I'd like to think that I've gradually over time become a little bit more confident in what I'm doing mm -hmm. or how I'm doing something, but I still feel like I have moments where I got to check it and make sure that I'm not like getting an ego about it, you know? Um, yeah, I can see that. And I worry about that a lot, but I'm not as uh, I'm not as like super terrified about messing something up as I was probably a year ago too. So I would say that like being a little bit more comfortable in my own skin as a yes. person and no, as a you know what? is my, my personal measurement of success. I totally relate with that. Yeah. Because when we started doing this podcast and then decided <laughs> let's go to conventions and interview people, I was so in myself, so mm -hmm. afraid to like just go up and talk to people. Yeah. And now it's it's my favorite thing is like getting to sit down with someone like you and have a conversation like this because it's fun, and I get to know people, and we yeah. get to like learn things about each other, and it's like, it's great. And so, yeah, I totally get that. Like, I'm not as in myself anymore. Like, I've, right. I've, I've stepped out outside of that, and yeah, definitely. For sure. I love that answer. Oh, thank you. I and, and it's funny because like lately I've been thinking about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three again, like as a cathartic, like that mm -hmm. film. Uh, Rocket's journey was really cathartic for me. Yes. But like. I was listening to the soundtrack to that, and Badlands was a song that I hadn't really studied the lyrics, you know, to as closely until I saw it was included on that soundtrack. And I listened to it, and, like, one of the lyrics is something like, a poor man wants to be rich, a rich man wants to be king, and a king ain't satisfied until he rules everything. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's like... Because yeah. last year, I was like, well, you know, I'm here, and look at how big this room is. But then it's like, I feel like now I'm kind of like, it's a little bit different from what I might have thought about or said. Yeah. Because maybe that was my my uh, euphemistic answer for, well, I just really hope that, you know, next year we have a bigger room <laughs> or something like that. But 
now I'm realizing, no, it's actually a feeling of not being terrified of messing up and not, not having moments of, I guess you could say, self-loathing or regret if you yes. think that you messed up or, oh, yeah. it's so awkward. I'm like, you know what? Everybody's a person. It's fine. Nobody's really going to judge you that bad. I feel like that's that's actually yeah. That's what makes me realize too how much I I was desperate to get my foot in the door in the industry because I wanted it for so long since two thousand two mm -hmm. and two thousand eight and you know yeah. so I, I guess I'm starting to feel more comfortable and not so like gripping into like holding onto the thing so hard I'm like right. afraid to lose it so. All right. I hope so because if you're drawing Ninja Turtles, you know, that's pretty big. I mean, like, you're talking to somebody who was all turtles back. And I had the sheets, yeah. I had the curtains, the pillow covers, I had all the toys, yes. you know. So it's a huge undertaking for anybody, particularly something that's like, hey, remember the cartoon? Boom, here we go. This is a comic version. Um, and for you to be able to do that, I mean, me personally, I'm not an artist, so I have. No clue how one takes something from their brain and put it. I just that that, that is a superpower in my eyes. So, well, thank you. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're killing it, obviously. Thank and you. you know, I hope you do get more and more confident and just have fun with it. Oh, thanks really so do. much. Absolutely. It's really an honor to be to be doing it. So, yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks.